Welcome to everyone in OpenVSP land. The 2025 OpenVSP workshop is fast approaching. If you can join us on July 8 to 10, you will learn about the latest and greatest developments in OpenVSP. I'm super excited to share what we've been working on, so I thought I'd do a quick demo of the video of a few things. Think of this as a teaser trailer for the OpenVSP workshop. Although it is not yet released, OpenVSP will soon have a bunch of new geometry analysis capabilities. I think these capabilities will enable the largest change in years in how people use OpenVSP to design aircraft. Let's say we're working on a VTOL design like this generic tilt rotor aircraft. This is a vehicle that can take several configurations, cruise, hover, and stowed. I've used variable presets to make it easy to switch between these configurations. This is a design where it's easy to get into trouble. If you increase the wingspan, the nacelles may hit the tail when stowed. If you increase the rotor diameter, the blades may hit the side of the fuselage. In the past, these kinds of configuration checks have been very manual and frequently qualitative. Sometimes these checks involve a geometry that is not explicitly represented in your model, like the arc a propeller swings through, including some flapping, or the potential burst zone if that propeller were to be lost. These are now handled through auxiliary geometries in OpenVSP. The new geometry analysis capability helps to manage and set up a number of geometric checks familiar to aircraft configurators. Here are a series of geometric analyses that I have set up for this model. For example, you might want to check that the cruise propellers don't interfere with the geometry while it's spinning. We can perform this analysis and it will show us with this little red line what is the nearest point of clearance between those two sets. Similarly, we can check do the two propellers interfere with one another in their swing. And likewise, we can check that interference and find the minimum distance. We can check the stowed wing and nacelles to see if they conflict and interfere with the fuselage. Once again, here's this red line showing the minimum approach of those two components. We can also check, do the propellers in a stowed position conflict with one another? And here we've calculated, once again, the minimum distance there. We might be interested in some packaging restrictions so that we can make sure that all of the things that are supposed to be inside the aircraft are in fact inside the aircraft and none of them ex protrude through the outside. Here we see that this cargo bay is the nearest distance, is the nearest approach to this fuselage. We also may want to show, to check, whether the components on the inside of the aircraft interfere with one another. And here we see that the minimum distance between the crew or the crew and the cargo bay is between the elbows of the flight crew. And finally, in this case, we might want to check do, does, do the hover propellers interfere in any way with the rest of the airframe? And once again, we can check the minimum approach there. Now, in this situation, all of these checks pass, which is, of course, what you want in your design. However, let's consider some design changes. Say we needed to increase the rotor diameter by... 25% and we see immediately that those are going to interfere and we also decided to bring the forward side edge of the cargo bay further forward there we go about there and while we're at it and we'll take out the sweep of the wing So now we'll go back and we'll run all of these analyses and we'll check to see what difference that made. So first off, in this case, we see that the cruise propeller now hits the center of the fuselage and even some of the center wing section. And now the volume of interference is indicated with that red highlighted mesh. We also see that the propellers interfere with one another colliding there. 
we also now see that the nacelle, no, not the nacelle, we see that the folded propeller interferes with the vertical tail. The propellers now interfere hitting one another in their folded position. We see that the cargo bay interferes with the flight crew. In the end, we see that just a few design changes cause us to fail most of these geometry checks. While these kinds of checks have usually in the past been manual and qualitative, they are now automated and quantitative. Wherever possible, OpenVSP calculates a continuous metric that is valid both on the passing and failing side of each check so that these checks can be used as a constraint or an objective in a design process. Many configuration requirements revolve around the landing gear, and so a new landing gear component has been added to OpenVSP with this in mind. The landing gear definition actually starts with the definition of the nominal ground plane. Then, groups of wheels are added to the ground plane and positioned. Bogies are parameterized with the number across and the number in tandem. Tires and rims are parameterized using the conventions of the Tire and Rim Association. A simple model of strut compression and extension is included. A CG envelope for the aircraft is also included in the gear definition. Perhaps surprisingly, this landing gear model has no provision for the strut, retraction, or even attachment to the airframe at this time. There are several auxiliary geometries based on the landing gear that allow us to define an off-nominal state of the landing gear. In this case, we're defining a three-point contact ground plane. So we choose the first bogey as bogey one. We choose the second, the first symmetrical copy as contact point two. And we choose the second, the other symmetrical copy as contact point three. So now we defined an off-nominal gear plane and we can come in and for example, we can compress one of the gear and find the off nominal ground plane. In addition to gear compression, we can find the unloaded or the flat tire radius to correspond with any of the landing gear. To show how this can do, I'll load up a model that is already set up. As before, I have several geometry analyses set up for this model. I'll evaluate all of them and then go through and show you what they are. First, we calculate the tail strike angle, rotating about the main gear, what, what is the angle where the tail first makes contact. Then, using the off-nominal center of gravity positions, we calculate the angle between the center of gravity, most forward, most aft, and nominal, and the pivot point for the landing gear. We also calculate the first contact point roll angle when rotating about one landing gear. I calculate the tip over angle for the most forward, most aft, and nominal CG position. We calculate the weight distribution on each contact point. In this case, the worst case situation, the nose gear holds 8.5% of the gross weight. I calculate the turning radius of the landing gear gear tracks and the furthest extent of the airframe. We calculate the minimum ground clearance and the maximum ground clearance. How tall of a ceiling does the hangar need for you to fit in it? For carrier compatibility, there's something called the composite clearance envelope that combines all of the obstacles on an aircraft carrier deck into one composite clearance to show whether you clear or not.
Finally, we also calculate the domain of visibility from the pilot's viewpoint through a set of notional windows. There you have a quick overview of auxiliary geometry, geometry analysis, and the new landing gear component, and there's a lot more to be shown. These features work together to enable aircraft configurators to design aircraft. I know this has been quick, but please join us in the workshop for a deeper dive. If you can't make the workshop, all the videos will be posted online. I'll see you there.